Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to derive the thin lens equation. So, let's start with a drawing of a lens. We will have a lens that looks like this. And by the way, I assume that you know the equation or at least you saw it uh, in the thumbnail of my videos. So, I won't state it at the beginning. So, you know it and you will see why it is correct. Or if you don't know it, well, that's even better because it will be interesting, I hope. So, we have the lens. And what does a lens mean? It simply means that we have two refractive surfaces. And whenever we have a refractive surface, we can talk about the index of refraction. And in this case, the index of refraction for our lens is going to be n. For the outside of our lens, the environment, it will have a refractive index of n naught. All right, and uh, since we have two different refractive surfaces, this one is one side and this one is another side. They are uh, together, but you can analyze them separately, which we will do. Then we can say that the first spherical surface has a radius of curvature of R1 and the second one has a radius of curvature R2. Well then, if I have a light beam, a light source here, at a distance a to the uh, first refractive surface, and then if I send a light beam in this kind of a manner, then what will happen? Well, it will be refracted, and that means the direction of our light beam will change. So let's change it. Perhaps it is refracted in such a manner. And it will travel going like this, but you're saying, hey, there is another refractive surface, so it will be refracted again. And that is correct, but let's assume that there isn't another refractive surface. As I said, we will analyze the two surfaces separately and then combine the results. So if there isn't a, another refractive surface, our refracted light beam uh, travels in a straight line. Any line is straight, so excuse me, it travels in a line basically. So we have that. Now what we can do is we can, and also, also let's uh, call this distance B1. So it goes to a distance B1 after being refracted. Well, now we can use the formula for analyzing refraction in spherical surfaces. I derived that formula in one of my previous videos. You can access that video from the cards right now. It is also in the descriptions part. So that formula, which we already derived, tells us, tells us n naught divided by a plus the refractive index of our spherical surface divided by b1 is equal to, is equal to inside minus outside, n naught minus, uh, n minus n naught I mean, divided by the radius of curvature. So this comes from the formula that I already derived in one of my previous videos. This is cool, but how does this help us? Well, it doesn't help us by itself, but if we have another equation, then magic is going to happen. And where does the other equation come from? Well, it comes from, it comes from, yes, you guessed it, the second refractive surface. So if I focus on the second refractive surface, what I can say is, I will say, hey, look at this light beam. We have it here, and it is coming to our second refractive surface, so it will be refracted. Perhaps, I don't know, it will be like this perhaps, okay? It doesn't really matter, but let's say that it goes to a distance b, okay? So some distance b. It will be refracted, and then it will uh, hit the principal axis at a distance of b to the second refractive surface. Then, I already know what this part is, right? Don't I? That part... Um, that part will be n naught. So I know this part. I mean, this part is going to be. Let's erase that. It will be n naught divided by b. You might be wondering. Okay, we got b, but where does the n naught come from? Why isn't it n? Perhaps it was n here. Well, I want you to understand. In the first refractive case, we had something like this. I'm not going to draw the second uh, refractive surface. We had our n here and n not here and as a result b1 was in the part uh, where we have n 
But this time, this picture is reversed. So a, B falls to N part, okay? So we should, uh, I mean to N not part. This is N not. So that is why in a sense we use N not, not N anymore, but N not. However, the other part is a little more interesting. So plus, we will have obviously N, I mean, the light is coming. Let me draw it again. Oops, what am I doing? So the light is obviously coming from N. So we will have N, we had N naught, we will have N, but what should be the divisor? What should we divide N by? Well, we will divide it by B1 and not just B1, by negative B1. Why is that? Because understand this, since we have this dashed line coming through, we can ask the question, where does this dashed line intersect the principal axis? And well, it will intersect it at B1. All right, but really understand this. This doesn't really intersect it. It's extensional intersects the principal axis. That's where the negative comes from. Since the light beam doesn't really intersect the principal axis, it's extension only, only the extension intersects the principal axis. So we put a negative sign in front. That is very important for our derivation. So I hope it makes total sense. I hope. And if, the, if it doesn't, I mean, you can always ask your questions in the comment section. Then on the right, you will again have n minus n naught divided by R2. All right. And now we are ready to... Uh, to combine these two results. How can we combine these? Well, I see a great sign. I see that this and this, well, they look a lot similar. The only difference is their signs are reversed. Well, then let me add them so that they give me zero. Because my favorite number is zero and it should be your favorite too. Because zero is great. Addition, subtraction, everything is great with it. At least you don't if you don't divide by it, don't never do that. So we have n naught divided by a plus n naught divided by b. And as I argued, n divided by b1, it is gone because we have plus, minus, it gives you zero. This is equal to, we will have n minus n naught divided by r1 plus n minus n naught divided by divide by r2 and i can factor out n minus n naught so i will have n minus n naught 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so let me well let me write this result on a new page so we will have n naught divided by a plus n naught divided by b is equal to uh, it is equal to n minus n naught as you can see here. And then we have the sum of the reciprocals of the uh, radiuses. Radiuses of curvature. Great. Now it is conventional to uh, go a step even further and express this result by dividing both sides by n naught. If we do that on the left, we are going to have 1 over a plus 1 over b. And I really understand why this is conventional because on the left, we have something that is very similar to the mirror equation, which you can also access from the cards. Right now, I have a derivation about it. It is also in the descriptions part. So on the left, we have something that looks very familiar. It is the mirror equation, actually. We don't have a mirror here, but we have a lens. And it is great to see that there is a great parallel between the two. Then if I divide both sides by n naught, I will have n minus n naught. And let's put the parentheses here. Did I put it on the last line? Oop, I didn't. So put the parenthesis. It is important. We have that. And if I divide n naught by n naught, I get 1. And I close the parentheses. And then I have the sum of the reciprocals. And this is the lens equation. This is the tin lens equation. Tin means that, tin means that we assume this distance d, the thickness of our lens to be very small. It is small relative to other distances that we are dealing with. And this is a good approximation because in real life, your A and B values are very, very likely 
a lot greater than the thickness of the lens that we are using. I also want to highlight one last point and that is in a lot of sources you might see this plus as a negative. And it might be confusing. You might say, well, what is wrong about our derivation or what is wrong about the other formulas? Well, nothing is wrong. It is about the convention. The convention is perhaps uh, some people use a minus here and that comes from this step. They would have written n not minus n instead of n minus n not. And you can do that, but that's not how I prefer to do it. So in our convention, uh, in this case, perhaps, uh, for example, R2 would be a negative value, okay? So if you have something like this here, R1 is, um, it is going to be plus and R2 is going to be minus, okay? So convex and concave, they have different sign values and we are familiar with this kind of a situation because also for focal length, they have uh, different signs for their fo focal length okay so really keep this in mind it is important that you know the conventions before using any optics formulas and unfortunately i won't go over them in this video but if you want in a pre in a future video i can go over them so if you want that please write them in the comment section but anyways this is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and learned something if you have any questions write them in the comment section and i hope to see you in another video until then Take care.